It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. All right, we have completed the first round of the NCAA tournament, and believe it or not, I know a lot of people don't look at it this way, but half the tournament's over. Uh, by the time we get to Sunday night, two-thirds of the tournament will be over, and then it belongs to the heavyweights, and actually, it really does already. Um Let's be honest. This has not been a very, very exciting first two days. It has not been a very exciting tournament. It has not had that run of games where you get upset, followed by upset, followed by white knuckler, followed by buzzer beater, followed by wild shot. You know, the kind of stuff that you get. We've only had two real upsets, Oakland upsetting third seed of Kentucky and then Yale upsetting fourth-seeded Auburn, which was a top-10 team, a legitimate team, lost its center on a flagrant foul. Really weird play. Um, And what you notice, and it's very obvious, is when you get those upsets, it's because those teams make shots. They have to make shots. If they don't make shots they don't pull off the upsets. If they, if they come out and they shoot blanks like McNeese did or like Charleston did in the second 10 minutes of the first half and the game got away from them, then they came back and put up a 60-point second half. It didn't matter. They had already allowed Alabama to run away, and Alabama scored 109 points. Sears was unbelievable. He scored 30 points on very economical shooting. He had a brilliant game. And their game against Alabama's game against Grand Canyon would be fascinating because Grand Canyon and James Madison didn't just win as 12s against 5s. And 12 fives are very normal. Just like 6-11s are normal. You have 3-11s win. So any upset that you get at 12-5, 6-11, they're not really upsets. I mean, those teams are all bunched together very tightly. Some of those 11s are even favored. And they win going away. The upsets are when you beat a seeded team, when you beat a three seed or a four seed. Now, Madison and Grand Canyon, they won impressively. They overwhelmed their opponents. They overwhelmed good teams. James Madison just destroyed Wisconsin. Grand Canyon overwhelmed St. Mary's. And those teams are live in their games. I mean, James Madison, Duke will be a really good game. Grand Canyon, Alabama will be a really fascinating game because they have players. I mean, they have legitimate, legitimate players, big-time players. And either one of them winning would not surprise anybody. Now, we didn't get a lot of excitement, let's be honest. Houston won by 40. You knew Houston was going to come out after that clunker last week against Iowa State and punish somebody. They did. They won by 40. UConn won by 39. Carolina won by 28. Purdue won by 28. Tennessee won by 34. Arizona won by 20. Marquette, after losing in the first half, won by 18. Iowa State won by 17. Baylor won by 25. These are all games that, you know what, were boring. One-sided. But what that means is not getting those teams in trouble in the first round, where they either pulled the game out or you got a thrilling upset. And it's always a wild upset when you get a one-out or a two-out or a Kentucky out, even an Auburn out. I mean, it's a great win for Yale. And Yale's a good team. I think they'll play very well, very well, in their game against San Diego State. They're a good team. The Ivy League teams are good. They just don't get a chance to prove it very often. But what these games mean is you're going to get better games deeper in the tournament with all these games being alive. It's going to make for better regional semis and regional finals because, let's be honest, most of the time if you get a big team, I mean a Cinderella team that gets as far as the final eight or the final four, they usually run into a team that just destroys them. They're Endings usually aren't sweet. They're usually really ugly. 
they like hit an abutment and they get destroyed. So not getting that drama early means you're going to get showdowns later. And that's a positive thing. It gives you something to look forward to in those Sweet 16 and those Elite 8 games. Because there's going to be some really interesting matchups there. Now tomorrow, you have... They do it a little differently now than they used to with the three networks. Tomorrow, you have eight games. Sunday, you have eight games. Dayton, Arizona is a standalone game. Arizona is a nine and a half point favorite. Then Gonzaga and Kansas. Kansas is the underdog because they're injured. And they just held on. And let's be honest, Sanford got screwed. It didn't mean they would have won the game, but they had a shot to win the game. So Gonzaga is the favorite, and Gonzaga played really well. Those two games are standalone. Then you got the blocker game starting at 530 with a really good game. Michigan State. I told you, I almost picked Michigan State in the West. I thought about it. I I chickened out, I admit it. And I picked Alabama. And Alabama put up 109 tonight against uh, against Charleston. I mean, Charleston scored in the high 90s, but you know what? Alabama scored 109. And Alabama can do that to just about anybody. They're that kind of offensive team. And they have a really explosive player in Sears. You have Michigan State and Carolina. Then after that, a half hour later, you got Washington State and Iowa State. All right, that's not going to thrill anybody. Then you got Oakland and NC State. Now, 14 against an 11. NC State's a six and a half point favorite. Then you have a game that I was looking forward to. Tennessee deserves to be favored. They're a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Texas, Tennessee. Texas on its best now. They can't go one for 14 like they did in game one. But Texas on its best behavior can put a big scare. And this is an interesting – you got two games today where mentors are facing their old teams. Barnes is going up against Texas a team that he coached, a team that he took to the Final Four, a place where he was as a fixture. And later on in the later game, you have Oregon and Dana Altman going up against Creighton. He used to be the coach of Creighton for years. So you got Texas and Tennessee. Duquesne, which surprised a lot of people being around, and it'll be really surprising if they can hang in against Illinois. If you like, if there's a game that could disintegrate tomorrow, I think that's your game. Illinois is a nine-point favorite. Duquesne's going to have to get off to a fast start in the game where Illinois is going to punish him. Oregon, Creighton. Creighton's a five-point favorite. So eight games tomorrow. The way to look at it is, would you watch, if it was a regular Saturday, would you watch that game? You'd watch Michigan State, Carolina. That's a good game. You might watch, you might tune in on Texas, Tennessee, maybe. Oregon, Creighton, if you're a diehard. The other games, other than Gonzaga, Kansas, which, you know, could be a national TV game any day of the week. Dayton, Arizona is not going to excite anybody. Washington State, Iowa State is not going to excite anybody. Oakland, NC State is not going to excite anybody. Duquesne, Illinois, you wouldn't even watch. So they're not overwhelming matchups, but you never know where the good game's coming from. The line's real quick. Arizona's nine and a half. Gonzaga's four and a half. Carolina's a three-point favorite against Michigan State. That's it, three points. Iowa State's six and a half over Washington State. Washington State came back on Drake. They were down eight. With six minutes to play, they came back and won the game. NC State, six and a half over a real Cinderella, which is Oakland. Can Oakland, with their ageless coach and with their three-point shooter who put on a show against Kentucky, Jack Golke, can he do it again against NC State? 
Texas with Max Amos. Max is one of the highest scorers in the history of the league. He didn't have a good game, history of the NCAAs. He owned the tournament with Oral Roberts. Can he put on that kind of show again against a good Tennessee team? Oregon and Dana Altman. Dana Altman in recent years is the best point spread coach in the tournament now that Jay Wright's not in it. Jay Wright was the best point spread coach in the tournament over the last six years or eight years, whatever you want to look at. Dana Altman was second. So those are your eight games on Saturday. And I think I said that Illinois is a nine-point favorite and Creighton is a five-point favorite. Eight on Saturday, eight on Sunday. Some interesting games on Sunday. Houston against Texas A&M. Texas A&M played really well. They hit a lot of threes tonight. When they hit threes, they're a good team because they can rebound. They played well against Nebraska. Now Houston against Texas A&M. James Madison, which played so well tonight against Duke. Colorado against Marquette. Purdue against Utah State. Utah State played well. Now they get Purdue. Purdue in, in Indianapolis with that crowd behind them, they're not losing. They're not losing in Indianapolis. Clemson played well. You know, everybody loved New Mexico. Clemson played really well. Won that game in a dance. Now they get Baylor. Grand Canyon's got players. They go up against Alabama. That's going to be a good game. If you like basketball, it's going to be a good game. People are going to be rooting for Yale. And then UConn gets Northwestern. That Northwestern game, if you watched it today early, against Florida Atlantic was a terrific game. If you don't know what happened there, Florida Atlantic was down. They made a run. They got, remember, Florida Atlantic went to the, you know, had the huge run last year. And their coach, it looks like, is headed to rebuild Louisville. Florida Atlantic takes the lead, and their big center's on the line. And he makes free throws. He's got a one and one up two. Makes two free throws. It's over. They're a winner. He misses the one and one. Northwestern comes down and ties the game. Florida Atlantic did a terrible job on the last possession. Got off an awful shot. Game went to overtime, and Northwestern blitzed him in the overtime. Now Northwestern gets UConn in Brooklyn. UConn today put up 50 in the first half, and just they were up 37 to 10, and they just coasted the rest of the way. Northwestern's a good team. Just to show you how powerful UConn is, UConn is a 14-point favorite in the game. Against a Northwestern team, that is a good team. But that's how strong they've been. And Auburn's out now. So if UConn takes care of Northwestern, they're going to get the winner at Yale-San Diego State. Now, that's a rematch. UConn-San Diego State of the championship game. If it's San Diego State in the Sweet 16, it's a rematch of last year's game. Except San Diego State isn't as good as they were last year. And UConn looks like they are. And last year, they didn't play a close game in the NCAA tournament. So, we don't have a lot of glamour games on Saturday. I always give it to you straight, but that doesn't mean you might not get some really interesting games. Michigan State is live against Carolina. That's going to be a really fun game. Oregon against Creighton is going to be a really fun game. Is going to be can can Oakland get to the Sweet 16, which would be a great story. Same thing for Duquesne, but I think Duquesne's hands are going to be that's going to be a really tough one for them against Illinois. That's a rough matchup, really rough matchup. And Gonzaga Kansas is a real good game, but Kansas is limited right now. They're going to have to 
play an exceptional game against a Gonzaga team. Well, a lot of people wrote off this year, but now here they are, and they're playing well. And I'm interested in that Texas-Tennessee game. We got eight more Sunday, and then, you know what? Then it is a tournament for the heavyweights. Then you're on your way. So, hey, a lot of people tell you, you know, oh, this tournament's always so amazingly exciting. You know, a lot of people make excuse, you may, may, a lot of people make excuses for it. A lot of people always want to, you know, the guys who are college basketball guys want to always tell you how it's always the most thrilling event. Well, you know what? It wasn't very exciting the first two days. That doesn't mean it's not going to be classic tomorrow. Because you never know when that moment's going to spring. When you're going to get that moment. And that team's going to jump up. And you get that exciting couple of minutes. Like you got at the end of this Yale game against Auburn tonight. I mean, you get a player who averages 13 points a game and he puts up 28 points and he can't miss down the stretch. Hitting bomb after bomb. And that's what you notice is if you're going to pull the upset, you got to make shots. Oakland made shots. Yale made shots. That's how you spring these upsets. It has to happen that way. And the big teams, UConn, Houston, Purdue, didn't show you anything except what they've shown you all year, which is a lot of power. Purdue means business, and putting them in Indianapolis, it's like a home game. I mean, that crowd was wild for them today. There's no way they're going to get beat. But from the Sweet 16, they got two big games to get to a Final Four. I would love a UConn-Purdue Final. I would love to see that matchup with the UConn team going up against Purdue and Edie. I would love to see that game. I think that would be a, a really, really terrific championship game. So this tournament, you never know which way it's going to go, but you'll, you'll get paid off later for some really lopsided games now. You know, I've gone back with this tournament a long, long way. I remember Kareem playing championship games on Saturday afternoon. You guys remember when the tournament moved where the Final Four went to Saturday. It used to be on Thursday, and the championship game was on Saturday afternoon. Then they moved the championship game to Monday night and played the Final Four on Saturday. That's when the tournament really started to take off. And then they started seeding teams late in the 70s. I think 79 was the first year they seeded teams. 73 was the first year they put the Final Four on Saturday. It was UCLA against Indiana. And Indiana made some really serious runs at UCLA in that game. Because I was a huge Walton guy. And then Walton played Memphis. And Memphis beat Providence with Ernie D, who I loved. Who made all tournament and was All-America and was the high scorer in the whole tournament. But in the championship game, they had a guard, Walton. And, you know, that's the game Walton went 21 or 22 from the floor and scored 44 points in the championship game on Monday night. <clears throat> the first Monday night game ever in prime time. He beat Memphis by about 20, 21 points, if I remember right. And he scored 44, 21 or 22 from the floor. They couldn't deal with him. Greg Lee throwing the lobs. Walton was an amazing collegian, you know. He didn't lose his sophomore year. They went undefeated. His junior year, they went undefeated. <clears throat> they lost four games as a senior. 
They lost to Notre Dame, which broke the 88-game winning streak. They lost two games to Oregon and Oregon State, called the lost weekend. And then they played a semifinal game against the undefeated David Thompson, Tom Burleson, NC State team. And Wooden was a proponent of the shot clock. This was pre-shot clock. And this game went back and forth, back and forth. And every time they had a lead, UCLA, they kept attacking because they didn't hold the ball. And as soon as NC State got a lead, they held the ball. And they went on to win the game. And NC State won the championship. So that senior year, Walton didn't play in a championship game. He lost in the semifinals. But he, his junior year was the game that everyone always talks about, the 44-point game that they won against Memphis. And he put on the show that night, <clears throat> an amazing show. And that was the first game ever played in primetime back in 1973, a long, long time ago. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.